Welcome to another edition of the Quant Trader's Guide to Algobox. Tonight, I'm going to be talking to you about six tips on how to pay yourself. This is one of those topics that 95% of traders may never have to concern themselves with. But in the, if you watch the members in our crew, you will see that this is definitely something you're going to have to be, uh, be worrying about. Things like how to pay yourself, how to deal with taxes. I'm going to talk to you about the advantages of trading E-minis with the 60-40 split rule, things you need to know about, and how to do some little things like using a secondary account in order to transfer funds to pay yourself. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you some of this stuff here tonight. Make sure and smash that like button while we take care of some of this housekeeping. Let's do this. All righty then, let's come on down here to our training window. Um, again, if you've not done so already, smash that like button, follow us over here on YouTube particularly, and of course on our social media, those links are down below. The Discord chat room that you're gonna see here tonight is important to be involved with. That is down in the links in the description below or on our website, so get involved there. And if you haven't done so already, install that two week free trial, otherwise you're gonna be a little bit lost on some of the strategies that we use. Again, if you wanna watch any of those strategy videos, you can watch those for free, learn those, how to use those, and install it on your computer and try them out for yourself so you'll see cut right to the chase. That is a fairly common thing. I'm gonna show you guys this first tip is, number one, get a sub, oops. Get a sub account with your broker. All right, so what does that mean? So uh, when you have your, your main account, um, this is, you know, there are fees involved with this. You are gonna be paying for a data feed and things like that. And this one usually doesn't have any costs associated. But if you add a secondary sub account, just phone up your broker. Again, this is different between each broker. I don't wanna get into the specific details on each broker. I'll give you guys some round ballparks on how much each one of these things costs. But the reason that you want this, uh, this secondary account is what, what I use to, to pay myself with, as well as some other benefits that I'm gonna talk about, okay? So to have that sub account, what you're gonna do, so let's say that um, you have, let's, let's use an arbitrary number here, but I think this is a good place to start. Um, to have yourself a, uh, every business has working capital, right? And let's say that your working capital with your trading business is a $10,000 account. Because if you've been through our program, you started with the 2,500, you went through the 5K challenge, you made it up to the 8K, and now you've grown yourself to where you're at $10,000, right? Now at $10,000, this is a spot where you really have some ability to trade well, you can trade some size. This allows you with our system to trade up to 20 contracts. <clears throat> on the majority of the um, instruments that we trade. Pardon me for my, my throat tonight, I've been a little under the weather <clears throat> and allergies here. And so with that $10,000, we want to we want to maintain this. And, and this is what I suggest that you keep in your, in your working capital account, okay? Think about this as your working capital account right here, all right? So um, now let's say that on you know, the day 21 of your uh, of your trading, you are, you, you see over in your account, you've got $12,000 in your account. All right, so let's move this up to, so you're at 12,500. And it's very tempting to just keep growing that account, okay? And now remember, we are focusing on business transaction. What do businesses do? Do they just keep a lot of money just sitting in their accounts? No, this is working capital. And we want to take those funds, cipher them off, so that we start to pay ourselves over time. This does many things. I'll talk about the um, the benefits of this here in just a moment. Let's go through um, the action items first though. All right, so what we're gonna do um, when we have reached really any level, anything over $10,000, and you can do this, I actually recommend to do this daily, okay? This is something that, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't like doing that daily. Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is almost a requirement. Okay, and I'll tell you about why. Okay, put a big star by this. I want you to transfer your funds daily. Okay, you have a day where you hit $2,500 in a day. So, you know, you're up plus 2,500. Okay, that $2,500 needs to get put right here the same day that you make it. Okay, now remember, so what's up here in this account? It's gonna be our 10,000 working capital. Um, we should do this in a different color. Um, let's do this in that. Um, red's no good either, is it? How about P for pink, right? So this is our price stuff. P for pink, price, here we go. So this is our $10,000 working capital. Okay, start becoming familiar with those terms, working capital. 
So this is what you're gonna be working with. Now, when you get to that 2,500, you set it right there, you guys get the drill. The next day, you know, you make 500, doesn't matter. Put that money right here. Oops. Um, let's go to green, okay, T. All right, that one. Right, each day, at the end of every day, I want you to just go into your account and swap this over. And now remember, any broker is gonna have this. Um, you know, this will be an instant transfer. That's why you also want to do this because look, you're gonna say, well, I'll just ACH it to my bank account. I know all the excuses. You're gonna, oh, ACH. That takes multiple days. You don't want to do wire transfers. That's going to cost you at least $25 here in the United States. So just trust me, just do the intraday um, transfer in intra account, okay, into your sub account. Just put that money over there into the other account every day, okay? You guys got that so far? So every day you're putting that over there. Um, now, how often do you pay yourself? Okay, this is up to you. But I'll tell you some caveats to this. So, um, you know, if you're used to steady paycheck job, you know, the two week thing is a good idea. If you want to pay yourself monthly, it just depends on your circumstances. So I can't dictate that to you, but I can say you don't want to. Here's what some people are tempted to do. OK, I transfer it to that account and then I immediately initiate an ACH transfer out. You also don't want to do this. You don't want to transfer out too quickly. Okay. Because what can happen is, let's say that you're, you know, this is not always wins. If you um, lose some in your working capital account, okay, you, what I want you to do is be able to transfer those funds directly back. You guys follow that? Okay. So the funds can flow both directions. You know, on a red day, I want you to make sure you maintain that $10,000. Now, you know, you should have your limits set for you. We already have those in our room and things. You should already know kind of what that should be, but you want to maintain a balance here as well. So you don't want to necessarily pay out everything here. So what you do is allow this account to grow. This is your growth account. All right. And you want to keep another set of working capital in there because again, if you, uh, you know, this is like lost capital. If you're running a normal business, this is things like you're going to spend on advertising or employer stuff or insurance, etc. There needs to be a secondary set of cash ready for that working capital as well. Okay. And those funds can go back and forth. You guys follow that? Now out of that. So let's say that you pick, you pick an arbitrary number, right? Maybe even $5,000. You maybe want to grow this to $5,000 because hopefully you're not going to ever lose 5k in a day with our program losing 50% of that account that's not something that we are are going to be doing but just in case worst case scenario something catastrophic occurs you want to leave $5,000 in that account so everything over that $5,000 that is what you're going to pay yourself with oops use the control key so here's what we're going to do here um yeah it's fine All right, now this is where you're gonna pay yourself and this is a, an ACH transfer. So to do that, oh, I've got the, the markets are on the move there tonight. I hear it going like crazy. ACH transfer. Now, ACHs can take, you know, one day. Sometimes they can take three days. If there's holidays, they can take four days. This is based on, you know, intra intra bank transactional stuff, but you want to ACH yourself from that second account, okay? Um, so benefits to these things, things like, um, you know, so let's say I've, I've heard of people growing huge accounts and then all of a sudden it is tempting to hold on to positions. You do all kinds of stuff. Again, this is not kind of really in our repertoire or in our program. Uh, you know, you guys have seen our profit factors. We're going to show some results here at the end of, um, the broadcast here to show you, you know, not just my P and L, like what most guru guru, um, scammers out there are showing you, but I'm going to show results from our members as well as my own accounts, what we're doing with the algo box system. But when you start need to think about paying yourself out, what you don't want to do is run a situation where you are tempted to, you know, risk, a, you know, money up, up here. Okay. We want to constantly sit there and don't be tempted, right? It removes temptation from you. This allows you to, you know, have some consistency with what you're doing. It's also exciting to transfer those funds over into the other account and see that other account grow and then pay yourself at your leisure over and above what you think is not going to be lost capital. Okay. You guys got all that. Um, 
other benefits to that. Number one, so that you're not tempted, you don't lose, you know, a big account for some reason. Oh, so let's talk about this. Um, every broker has this. There's some things that people don't know about who have not run into the situation. Um, you know, by default, again, this is can change. You can set these on your own if you want. Wow, can't type tonight. Okay, by default, every broker that, at least the ones that we work with, I've never met one that's never done that, that's ever not done this, and I've been in quite a few brokers over my 15 year career, um, but they have an 80% rule. Now, this is not something that most of our members in our crew, you know, may ever experience, but in the event that you do, if you have a small account, um, you will see that each day you have an, an intraday rule. This is sort of protection for the broker that they will only allow you to lose 80% of your account. As soon as 80% of that account is gone, they will literally halt you for the day. Okay. Wow, cannot type tonight. Okay, so... Um, so that means they will leave you with 20% in your account. So if you want to do absolute worst case scenarios for that sub account, then how much would you need to keep in the other account, right? You would want to run that up to, for a $10,000 working capital, then $8,000 you would keep in the sub account and pay yourself over that in the event of catastrophic whatevers that you could literally pay yourself back in that next day and still have the same working capital that you are used to without impacting your business, right? So. Um, on our 10K, um, let's just do our WC, 10K working capital, we would need 8K in your reserve for that sub account. Okay, make it nice and colorful. Y'all know how we do. All right, you guys following that? So you're paying yourself out from that. Now, you also need to start tracking though how much you are paying yourself. Now remember, like that is permanent payment. Nobody can take that from you. That's the other advantage of, of doing it like this. And now again, you can set this up ahead of time. If you want to set up $10,000 in an account, $8,000 in the other, fantastic. Again, you know, we have people growing and coming from all different stages and walks and backgrounds of life. We have uh, professional traders who have been doing this for, you know, t multiple decades to the people who have, you know, just started learning how to trade in the same year. So everybody is a little bit different, but these are kind of your guidelines. Now, again, this is subjective. You can, you know, we start at $2,500 accounts. So do this appropriately with those percentages that we kind of just talked about with the 80%. So 80, 20 rule on doing that secondary account. Now, how much is that secondary account going to cost you? All right. So let's talk about um, some of the costs. Um, so a secondary account is generally speaking going to have about a, a $10 a month fee in general just to maintain that secondary sub account. So that's the cost of doing business. It'll cost you about $10. Now, what I actually recommend is that you also have a data feed. It's called a secondary. So uh, we only need top of book around here. So that is going to cost you, you know, around $8 for the CME packs that we trade for the seven or eight markets that we do. You just get the CME data pack. That's gonna be eight bucks. Okay. So your grand total to do what I'm talking about literally is going to cost you $18. That's your, you know, cost of doing business. It's amazing business that we have here, folks. I'm telling you, it's amazing, isn't it? So um, secondary data feeds, what can you do with that? Well, you can launch up into another computer. Now you might say, well, I thought we could only register, you know, Algobox on a single machine. Well, that's true, but we do have an option. There is a cheap option. If you guys would like to license a secondary machine, you know, come contact me on that, depending on which program you're in, gold or platinum or silver or bronze. You know, there are options for having a secondary account. As long as you're not sharing that with someone else, we can definitely set up that licensing for you. We do track all that. So, you know, we just keep that in mind and, you know, it's easy. We can definitely license you for a secondary machine. There are, there's a cost involved with that. Um, so if you guys want to know about that, come, come hit me up there in the Discord chat and we can talk about that. Um, but you can set up a secondary machine. Well, why, why would you want to do that? Well, um, if some of you guys have, um, look, I've got some folks who have like an i5 machine and haven't upgraded yet. 
Um, well, if you have two i5s laying around, maybe you want to run um, Ninja Trader on both of those uh, systems. You can run like NASDAQ that is such a beast and maybe takes up a whole lot of your horsepower on one machine. And you've got maybe some of the slower markets open up on your second machine. There's all kinds of things that can help out without having a second data feed. Um, you can be practicing on one system, trading live on the other system, all kinds of ways that you can mix and match that other advantages of having that secondary account. But it all starts with getting the secondary account to begin with. Okay, um, let's see. So we covered sub accounts, covered the cheap costs um, for the intra account transfer. Um, that can happen in a day. We covered that. Paying yourself weekly, bi weekly, or monthly, that's up to you. Um, now, keeping an Excel spreadsheet for profits, so stay tuned. Again, I know this is going to get some of the boring parts, but hang to the end about the 60 40 split rule. This is huge on your taxes stuff. So, next part we're going to talk about is um, keeping an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so when you are, this only applies to when you are, when you are paying yourself, all right? Um, okay, this is when you are um, transfer, let's see, you know, we're transferring to your personal account. Okay, now again, I know your your trading account is technically a personal account. But I'm talking about like when you are putting this into your personal bank account. Now, you can do this several ways. You know, like myself, I, I run this under an LLC for most of my trading accounts. So I'm putting this into my business account. It makes it easier for me to follow those transactions very easy. So when it comes down to my quarterly tax and stuff, that's quite easy for me to go in there and I can literally do a report inside of my business account. So maybe it's helpful in your bank to go ahead and create yourself a secondary account, even if it's not a business account, but an account that all of your profits that are coming out of your trading business are going into so that you can track that easier. Um, and of course, an Excel spreadsheet is still helpful in my opinion, but look, if you don't, it's perfectly fine. In fact, half the time, like I don't go and update my Excel spreadsheet very often and often enough. Oftentimes I just export out of my banking account that I transfer those funds into and it becomes, you know, that's kind of the easy way and that's perfectly fine. And that's like a little bit of a tip there if you want to use your personal banking account. Okay, so you might also wanna have second bank account just for your trading business for easy and reports okay because almost every bank these days now has you know reporting features where you can you know show only deposits from x account so it literally show everything that came out of that account and literally that's your that's exactly the number so you're not playing guessing games when you're doing your quarterly taxes okay so what comes to our next step Okay. So every quarter uh, from Uncle Sam, if you're in the United States, again, this doesn't necessarily apply. Those of you guys who are outside the United States, uh, but here we go. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room, taxes. Okay, simple answer. I cannot, I can always hit that tonight. Quarterly, just like any other business. Okay, so all businesses have to pay quarterly taxes if you're on a 1099, which is, by the way, how our income comes out. If people are asking you, you know, what form does that come in? It is a 1099-C, okay? Now, most people are familiar with a B. Um, that's for if you are a, um, a freelancer that you'll often get a 1099-B. You're going to get a 1099-C at the end of the year from the broker's here if you're trading with our systems, okay? So you're gonna be a 1099C if somebody's asking you about those. And on those quarterly taxes, you'll go to the website, you'll uh, the IRS website where you're paying quarterly. So you submit that, you give either your EIN if you're using it under a, uh, so let's, let's type that in here. So. Okay, so it's your EIN for your business or your SSN for your personal that you are going to be registering and paying your quarterly taxes. This is on the IRS website. 
Okay. Um, you know, this is very normal for people. If it's your first time, like I still remember the first time a long, long time ago when I started getting on the website and trying to figure this out. And I was like, oh man, I don't understand what I'm trying to do. It's actually very, very easy. Once you've done it the first time, it's easy. So I want to talk about that to let you know, like first time you're kind of like figuring your way out. Like, how do I get on it? But they literally are like, you know, how much you're going to be paying um, right now. And this is your quarter. They give you, you know, the dates for when you're putting this in and you do need to do it quarterly. If you don't, um, so those 1099Cs do say when you are receiving income. It's a little bit different with 1099C because they technically do not show this on that quarterly basis, but just to be safe so that you're not going to be paying the penalty fee. I don't know what that penalty fee is, but I know so from what I've heard that there is a significant um, tax penalty if you're not paying that quarterly. So, you know, don't don't ignore that. You're just going to be throwing away cash and, you know, they're, they're going to find it. All right. So make sure that you're not trying to, you know, skirt tax liabilities and tax laws. Um, so let's talk about advantages e mini advantages for taxes all right now this is not just e mini this is any future um the reason that there are let me talk about their reasoning because some people have challenged me before and it's like why would they do that it doesn't make any sense and i go i know i've, I've been there i asked the i asked the same questions i'm feeling love for you if you've got that um you know that you're upset because that doesn't make any sense well it will think about this um so capital gains okay let's talk about how and why, um, what is capital gains? Um, the rules. So uh, the definition of a capital gain, um, how do you pay capital gains tax instead of income tax? So um, capital gains taxes versus normal let's just call them income let's just do income taxes so the short answer is you want to pay capital gains okay because this is either 15 or 20 percent as of today you know if you guys watch this in the future who knows what uncle sam's going to do in the future um but you know if you're a successful six-figure income trader you're going to be paying anywhere from 28 percent on a minimum you know upwards of almost 40 percent of your income at some level, although I think the, the max cap is somewhere around like 35, but uh, if you're business wise, it could be upwards of 38. You know, don't quote me on that, not a CPA. I'm not trying to give tax advice. I'm giving you estimates on my own experience around this. Okay, so capital gains, which one would you rather pay? You know, obviously we want this. Okay, so here's our goal. Trading futures, period. Just because you're trading futures, all right? Some people are like, oh, I like trading stocks. Oh, well, that's fine if you like paying more money, like you and I can make the same amount of money, okay? But literally at the end of the year, Uncle Sam, if we are both, if we just make $100,000, two people both make $100,000, one person in E-minis, one person in stocks, um, the, the person who traded E-minis is literally getting a car back from Uncle Sam at the end of the year in the amount of money that they are saving from taxes just because they traded futures, okay? Now, why, um, why is that? Um, so why do futures get a break? Very, very simple. Contract rollover, my friends. Now, why, why would there be a tax break because there's contract rollover? Well, because the definition, let's talk about definitions of what is capital gains. A capital gain is, uh, by definition, of course, don't sue me for this, but just do it off the top of my head from this, so Google this. Uh, but a capital gain is gains that you've gained from an, an asset that has increased in value that you have held for a year or more, particularly uh, an equity, something in uh, futures, forex, um, any any asset in the equities arena right I'll, I'll pull this up just to make sure and you guys give me the definition down below in the comments um for the exact one from the old googles here i'm not going to take a minute to pause the video here because we're just doing this um off the cuff on the fly but the main thing about capital gains the main thing that matters in its definition is holding the asset or greater than one year okay so um you know, somebody who trades a stock if they are in you know turning it over and turning it over that is not by definition capital gains therefore they're going to pay standard income tax 
on that because they are generating income on that. It is not an investment, right? An investment is defined by 365 days of hold time. Don't quote me on that, but that is pretty close. Basically one year of time, okay? Um, so if you don't hold an asset for a year, well, here's, it's very simple. Can you hold You can answer this question, then you will have your answer as to why there is a big fat discount on um, on trading futures. You cannot, the answer is a trick question. You cannot hold a futures contract for a year because of contract rollover. You can only hold it for a quarter at the max. Um, let's see, is there anything you can hold longer than that? No, everything is a quarter. Nothing is held longer than that. Everything rolls over at least every quarter. Crude oil rolls over every month, right? Some things are monthly, some things are quarterly, some things every two months, like uh, gold, silver, etc. Okay, but you can't, you literally cannot hold a future. So the loophole is this. They're gonna give you capital gains, but they're not gonna give you full advantage of capital gains, okay? So herein comes the final thing. The biggest and most important point of all of this is the 60, 40, rule you know what this is talk to your you know your cpas your tax advisors on this uh, but i can definitely tell you that um so 60 percent of your income this is the side because yeah i remember early in my career i was like okay which one was it i would get confused as to which one was which right here there it is 60 percent of your income generated from futures trading is taxed at capital gains okay um That is the most important point, okay? So 60% of your income, okay? Now the rest, the 40% of it is taxed at standard um, standard income rate, right? So therein is the, um, there's a the difference. You guys got that? 60% of it. So if you make 100,000 in a year, $60,000 of that is taxed at the lower tax bracket rate. And again, there's a split on that depending if you make over, under, and after you have done all of your tax deductions and things as to whether or not that is going to be either 15% um, or 20% as of today, okay, uh, where we're doing this video. All right, so that's a huge, huge benefit, um, and that is, uh, that's important to know as you are, um, you know, carrying along with your tax, uh, with your taxes on your trading business, okay? Those are the main points I want to cover here tonight. So as far as like, you know, well, what kind of numbers are we putting up? Um, I'm going to go over here into our, uh, results section and just you know let's let's show case what we can do the other trade rooms is not just showing you guys like oh well you know they you know, he's just another guy talking about taxes but you know you know how are, are they are they really profitable well let's just run through a few of these these are actually from our members not just for myself here's one of our members uh, pip is uh, 6500 today profit factor 2.36 54% profitable 65 hundred dollars today again that means that his winners were 2.36 times the size of his losers profit factor is that important point here's rick nineteen hundred dollars today he's got a profit factor of 3.05 85 percent profitable that means his winners were three times the size of his losers at 80 percent as well holy shnikes here's matt let's take a peek here eleven hundred dollars today whoa hundred percent five trades hundred percent profitable well done matt eleven 50 today no need to worry about profit factor because that basically means you're at 100 percent there is no ratio on a day like that um here is this is ken uh, he didn't post his stats but that's his live account there 13 70 50 appreciate him posting his results there 5400 dollars for jc um profit factor tw oh my word does that say 12 12.42 his winners were 12.42 times the size of his losers 86 percent profitable Amazing work for $5,400. Amazing, amazing work. And again, folks, these are folks with small accounts. These are not people trading massive accounts. You don't need to. Now, here's a micros account from Michael. That is 200. It's a little bit blurry. Let me see if I got one that's not blurry. Uh, oh, here we go. $208. So this is on micros. That means that is $2,000 equivalent on the minis. But in micros, $208. Not bad. 73% profitable. Look at this profit factor. 3.8% three, almost four times the size of his losers for the winners. Excellent work. Um, who's is this one? Oh, Stinger. Sting, a thousand bucks today. Five trades, 100% profitable. He hit 100% today. Excellent work. 
Leanne, first try on NT8. Again, we are converting over, getting all of our folks over to Inch Trader 8, $760. Three profit factor and percent profitable, 75%. Amazing, amazing work. The stats are here, folks. You can go and check out all of these in our room. We're trading uh, live in our room every day. Come check it out. It is free. So I don't know why anybody would really not just come and at least see. If you want to join the audio floor and listen into the the consistency of what's going on inside of our trade floor, come and uh, come and hang out and listen in. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna like it. Install that two week free trial. And if you guys have questions, come hit us up over there in the chat box. Thanks for hanging out here tonight with me. Appreciate you. Drop me a comment down below if you like this video. Smash that like button. Share it out with your friends. We appreciate you. I will catch you guys on the flip side. For me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Curtis G, and the rest of the gang. I'm sitting out the Big H Town. See ya. Oh, and don't forget to check out our other videos down below. Lessons one through six, extremely important, along with the strategies that we do. Should be right here, showing up on the screens. Pick one of these. I'll see you on the flip side.